Hi, I'm Dan Middleton from the British Mountaineering Council and today I want to talk to you about modern helmets and look at what sort of protection they can offer you. came quite handy today already. I have bashed my head a few times, so it wasn't for the helmet, it would have hurt. Um, I usually base my decision on on, um, on loose rock, really, um, and what type of style of climbing I'm going to be doing. So, and I guess how difficult it is. I mean, if, if something's quite hard, then I guess I'll put, I'll put one on as well, you know. Okay. a cultural habit within our climbing club that we always insist or encourage everybody to wear a, a helmet. Something unexpected can happen, you know, and I think anybody that's been climbing for any length of time, you know, we've all seen rocks come off, we've all seen people drop bits of gear and stuff like that. I know people that don't wear helmets when they're climbing, but personally I choose to. When we're winter or alpine climbing, then there's a serious danger of rock and ice fall. And I think we'd agree that pretty much everyone wears a helmet when doing those sorts of routes. Uh, but I want, what I want to talk about today is rock climbing. Now in the UK at least, you're actually much more at risk uh, of getting injuries from a fall rather than rock fall um, when you're rock climbing. So I'm going to talk about modern helmets and how they protect against falls. Okay, so here we've got a hard shell helmet. If you look inside, this is the cradle. And these helmets are really good at protecting from impacts from above. But for side impacts, the cradle there can't move and absorb any of the impact. So, very good choice as an alpine or winter helmet. Okay, next here we've got a expanded plastic foam helmet. This sort of helmet, it's got foam all around, and that foam is the part that protects you from impacts on the top and sides. You've got to take real care transporting these helmets. They tend to fall apart after an impact or if they get sat on. So a good choice for just pure rock climbing, um, but not very good for long routes, extended trips. Finally, here we've got what we call a hybrid helmet. It's got a hard shell, if you look inside, big piece of foam in there, and it's actually the foam that absorbs the energy of impacts. So when you're choosing this sort of style of helmet, if you want good all-round protection, then you want one with extensive foam on the inside. So the more foam and the thicker the foam, the better protection it will give to side impacts. Good choice as an all-rounder if you want one helmet to do everything. In February 2000, Neil Bentley climbed Equilibrium at Burbage South. This fearsome route was Britain's first E10. Um, the Roots was one of the last kind of great gritstone routes tried by other people. Um, I climbed it in head point style, so you had to pre practice in a top rope and then you just go for it to, on the lead and uh, hope it don't fall off. One of the things that really stood out about that ascent was that you were wearing a helmet. Uh, people just didn't do that on hard gritstone routes back then. Uh, what led you to decide to wear one? Um, first attempt trying the route, um, I fell off it completely unexpectedly um, and then realised after that, that there's a possibility of maybe inverting. I'd, I'd never worn a helmet before and doing that kind of thing, and I kind of wanted they had, they had stacked up in my favour as much yeah. as possible, but it being the hardest thing I'd ever done. Yeah. So it kind of gave me a bit of comfort, really, wearing the helmet. It may have may not have helped, but um, I made a decision to, to put the helmet on. Now, you had a serious accident in the Dolomites a few years 
That's climbing kind of equilibrium. Uh, what happened to you? Were you wearing a helmet at the time? I was wearing a helmet at the time, yeah. Um, big multi pitch routes on Marmalada called the Fish. Um, it's kind of hard E5, E6. Having said that, I was on the top of the third pitch, which is not hard at all, HVC1. Um, some of it collapsed with me on it, although I don't have any memory of it. It's quite a few days missing. <laughs> you know, but I did have a helmet on. I suspect it probably may have saved my life. Okay, right. And, and what, what effect did the injuries have on you, sort of long, long term effects? Well, the actual injuries that I had were um, a smashed um, right eye orbit, uh, jaw broken two places, um, a neck um, traumatised, nerves, and, and a kind of smashed up calcaneum as well. But over the next few months, probably 18 months, certainly, you know, um, forgetfulness, still, still, like I say, still 10 days missing completely. Um, and, you know, it just takes a while to get back into your brain thinking normally. Yeah. So I was very lucky. Right. But, um, you know, I eventually got through it, but um, yeah, it's quite tough. Yeah, sure. And what would you say your attitude to wearing a helmet is these days? You know, has it changed from when you started out climbing? I think it has. When I first started climbing, I didn't, I didn't start climbing with people who kind of wore helmets. It wasn't the, wasn't the done thing. I didn't really think about it, it just wasn't done. Um, I started climbing in 85 with um, a couple of young lads and another older guy and uh, they didn't wear helmets. I can remember going to Cloggy back in kind of late 80s and sheep trundling stones at the top, you know, and you still didn't have a helmet on, just like, oh, look out, you know, miss that, miss that rock. Um, today, you know, I kind of make a, a reasoned decision about whether or not I'm going to wear it. I don't wear it all the time, yeah. but just on certain kind of routes. Uh, these days I usually wear one when I'm, when I'm leading, when I'm tied on, if I'm trad climbing or anywhere there's loose rock really, as soon as I get to the crag I put my helmet on, most of the time, <laughs> not today. <laughs> I assess the risk, loose rock, people above me, the ground I'm travelling on, that kind of thing, so there's certain crags you always would and there's certain crags you probably won't. I've been involved in a serious accident and uh, a helmet wouldn't have made any difference to be fair, so. I frequently don't at crags, but I've got small children who are wanting to get into it, so I'm trying to, even though they're not here today, I'm trying to encourage myself to wear it more often. Um, I don't, now modern helmets, they're not so much of an encumbrance as they used to be, so there's less of a reason to not wear one. Um, as I say, I, I would always tend to wear one in the mountains, and I'm trying to convince myself to wear one more and more when I'm cracking. I'd like to finish off with uh, one really important point. Uh, wearing a helmet isn't going to protect you necessarily from a massive impact, a really bad accident. But by choosing and wearing an appropriate helmet, you might just stack the odds in your favour.